Welcome to our segment where we talk about the Bible and science. Please remember that science points us to God because God is the creator of all the universe and we see his fingerprints throughout his creation. Now, this week's topic is, did humans evolve from ape-like creatures? Now, I want to tell you right from the get-go, I have a bias. I do not believe humans evolved from apes. I'm a creationist, and so I just tell you that from the get-go. Uh, Jesus said in responding to a question about divorce in Mark chapter 10, verses um, 6 through 9, he said this, But God made them male and female from the beginning of creation. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is, is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. And since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. So the foundation of marriage is based on God creating man and wom woman from the beginning of creation. So we did not evolve from apes. Now that's my bias. And so our evolutionary friends um, have created this ape-like idea for their theories. And to conjure up these theories, they have to do one of three things to get an ape man. And this is what is taught in a lot of our uh, public schools. And so the first way to get an ape man is when they discover a fossilized ape bones and then they upgrade a particular feature and make it more human-like with some imagination. Uh, the best known specimen of this would be a skeleton found that is commonly called Lucy. You might have heard of this. Uh, there is a real fancy technical name, but since English is my second language, I'm not even going to attempt to say it. Most people know this uh, skeleton as Lucy. Even though we only have 40% of this skeleton, uh, this creature is clearly an ape. It is a small chimp-like creature between three and four feet tall. Uh, the, the, uh, this, this ape is known to be long-armed knuckle walker with locking wrists. Both the hands and feet of this creature are ape-like. It has an ape-like hip, so it cannot walk like a human. Uh, Paleoanthropologist Jack Stern and Randall Sussman have reported that the hands of this species are surprisingly similar to the hands found in the small end of the pygmy chimpanzee, uh, which is common in the chimpanzee range. And so they say that the feet, like the hands, are long, curved, and heavily muscled, like those of living tree-dwelling primates. The authors conclude that no living primate had, has such hands and feet for any other purpose than to meet the demands of full or part-time living in a tree. And so that is what these guys say, and they are not even creationists. Despite evidence to the contrary, Evolutionists and museums continue to portray Lucy with virtually human feet, though some are finally showing the hands with long curved fingers. Another approach is to find humans in the fossil record and then downgrade them to ape-like. A good example would be the Neanderthal man. But unfortunately, most people think of Neanderthals to be primitive. We have over 300 Neanderthal specimens uh, that have been found scattered throughout most of the world, including Belgium, China, Central and North Africa, Iraq, the Czech Republic, Hungary, Greece, Northwestern Europe, and the Middle East. This group of people was characterized by prominent eyebrow ridges, which would be like the modern Australian Aborigines or uh, some of the uh, native Alaskans a low forehead, a long, narrow skull, a protruding upper jaw, and a strong lower jaw with a short chin. In addition, they were deep-chested, large-boned individuals with a powerful build. It should be emphasized, however, that none of these features fall outside the range of normal human an anatomy. Interesting, the brain size is, uh, of the Neanderthal man was more significant than the average for that of a modern man though this is rarely emphasized. 
There's a growing body of cultural evidence for the human status of Neanderthals. They buried their dead and they had elaborate funeral customs that included arranging the body and covering it with flowers. In addition, they made a variety of stone tools and worked with skins and leather. A wood flute was recently discovered among uh, the Neanderthal remains. These people lived rough lives, probably after the flood, during the brief ice age. There is even evidence that suggests that Neanderthals engaged in medical care. They were found with broken bones. Um, however, the bones were set, something that we've never seen an ape do. And so some Neanderthal specimens show evidence of survival to old age, despite numerous wounds, broken bones, blindness, and disease. The evidence suggests that these individuals were cared for and nurtured by others who showed human compassion. A third way to get an ape man is to combine the bones of a human with an ape. And the Piltdown Man is the most famous example of an ape man proven to be a combination of ape and human bones. In 1912, Charles Dawson, a medical doctor and an amateur paleontologist, discovered a mandible, which is the lower jawbone, and a part of a skull in a gravel pit near Piltdown, England. That's why he's called the Piltdown Man. The jawbone was ape-like, but had teeth that showed were, uh, were similar to a human pattern. The skull, on the other hand, was very human-like. The whole thing turned out to be an elaborate hoax. The skull it was indeed human, about 500 years old, while the jaw was that of a modern female orangutan whose teeth had been filled or filed to resemble the human wear pattern um, that, that um, we humans would have. The success of this hoax was for over 50 years despite the scrutiny of the best authorities in the world. It took them 50 years to figure out that this was a hoax. And that's because when you're looking at science, you see what you want to see. Uh, there's a guy named Sir Solly Zuckerman. Uh, he, did, he was so upset with this, he said this, it is doubtful if there is any science at all in the search for man's fossil ancestry. And he's, not, he's, he's an evolutionist. In summary, we are not descended from apes. Instead, God created man as the crown of his creation on day six. Therefore, we are a unique creation of God made in his image to bring him glory. This truth would create a revolution if our evolutionized culture totally understood it. I hope you've enjoyed this week's segment on Bible and science. Please remember that we Christians are never afraid of science. On the contrary, we embrace natural science because God is our creator and there are no surprises to him. Bible and science. The Bible and science. 